Email design, it could be your best friend or it could be your worst enemy. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to make effective email designs inside of Klaviyo. Design is a lot more about creating an effective email that actually converts people than it is purely about making a beautiful email. Although we will be showing you that too. There's gonna to be four core elements that we're gonna be talking about today. Number one is I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your template. Number two, we're gonna be talking about two laws of design. Number three, we're gonna be touching Touching on the hero image, which is really where the majority of the design occurs. And then number four, we're going to be putting it all together. Okay, so this is going to be the basic structure that you will be using whenever you are creating the majority of your emails. Now, there are emails that are different structures than this, but this is sort of the foundation that you can consistently refer back to whenever you are trying to create an email. So at the very top here of your template, you're going to have your logo. Now, immediately underneath that, you are going to have a menu. Now, now, the thing that I would recommend here is actually making it so this menu is hidden on mobile and keeping it for desktop. Now, beneath this, we have what is called a hero image. That is probably a term that you hear thrown around a lot and is basically just kind of like the core design or core imagery that you are showing inside of the email. Now, immediately beneath that, we're going to have probably some level of text, hopefully not too much, just a couple of sentences that describes whatever the offer or the promotion is, or maybe the context of the email. And then immediately following that, we are going to have a button. Now, like I said, this is really just a rule of thumb. It is not a hard and fast rule that you have to follow, but this is how the majority of emails that you see are going to be structured. Here's a really quick example. If you want to see more examples, you could go to reallygoodemails.com to see a bunch of different brands email structures. But here we have at the very top, a logo. This one in this instance is missing a menu. Then we have the hero image. This is the core design, a little bit of text, not too much. And then a button. They have a little bit of some following items here at the bottom, but this is really just the basic structure that we are going to be building that you could use on 80, 90% of your emails. If you want to set this up as a template for yourself that you could just duplicate to make your life 10 times easier, would highly recommend. Just click on templates inside of Klaviyo on the left-hand side and then press create template. From that point, you could go through and structure out this entire basic template that I just described, including how you want the buttons to look, the background, the fonts, and everything in between. The more time that you spend on this template, the easier the rest of your life will be whenever you duplicate it and create the rest of your emails. So take 10, 15 minutes and really customize this. Now we're going to be moving on over to two laws of design. There's a ton of laws that could be applied to design, but there's really two that I think are the most important. The very first law of design is thinking equals paralysis. Uh -huh. So what do I mean? Thinking equals paralysis. Basically, the more dumb, the more simple that you can make the email, the better that it's going to be. There's this funny thing called analysis paralysis that has been studied time and time again that basically just says the more that you have to think to make a decision, the less likely you are to make a decision. A lot of people think that more options is better, but oftentimes that stops people from ever actually making a decision, which is unfortunate. So what we want to do in order to combat this is to follow a couple of quick rules. Number one is what is called the rule of one. This comes directly from a book called Great Leads, and they use it in the context of writing copy. But I use this and extend it a little bit farther, which is just having one offer, one call to action, and one big idea. I'm not trying to direct attention to 20 different products. I'm trying to direct them to one collection. I'm not trying to give them a buy one, get one free and a 20% off. I'm going to send two separate emails for those different offers. So really making your attention and focus like a laser rather than a shotgun in an individual email is going to yield a much higher click-through rate. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with design? design? It has to do with the way that you are structuring your email and making sure that you're not including any sort of fluff that is unnecessary. This, this has to do with the way that you are structuring your email. Number two is that you want scannable copy. Basically, the copy should be easy to read at a glance. It should also be big enough for them to really see the highlights without having to read every single word. So if something's important, capitalize it or bold it or even bring it out as a title rather than body text. Prioritizing the offer simply means that it's going to be above the fold. The fold is basically whenever you open up the email on mobile, because the majority of people are going to be on mobile, anything that you see without having to scroll down is above the fold. And then as you scroll down, that bottom part of your phone is the fold, and then that's considered below the fold. So anything that is above the fold is prime real estate. That is like the good stuff, right? And so because of that, you want to make sure that you're only putting the most important things and the offer, whatever you are giving them, 
20% off, buy one, get one free, free shipping, whatever it is, should be above the fold. Now, I would highly recommend if you are just getting started with designing emails to do a single column design. A lot of people love the look of two column designs where it is text on one side and picture on another. But the issue with something like that is that it is more complicated to execute. So if you're just getting started, I would recommend only doing one column emails because again, it reduces that cognitive load to then make it so that their attention is focused so that they could make a decision rather than being paralyzed. Now, a little tip or trick to make sure that your copy is scannable and easy to read is head on over to Hemingway Editor. Uh, you just Google it. It will give you a really awesome writing tool that tells you whether or not your text is too complicated. Remember, whenever we are writing copy, we are writing for comprehension. We don't need to sound smart. We don't need to be overcomplicating anything. We want it to be as easy to comprehend as humanly possible, which usually means editing by removal rather than adding onto. Lastly, whenever it comes to reducing thinking, you want to optimize your buttons. There's a few really easy ways to do this. Number one, it should be big in size. It should also be bold in color. So nice contrast and then also really big so that way your fat thumb can hit it on mobile. Number three is place it above the fold. So just like the offers above the fold, so should the button. Now this one I'm a little bit more loose on. It doesn't have to be above the fold, but it is a nice to have. And then lastly, make it an island. What do I mean by that? Make it so that there's a lot of space up and down and left to right. That way that button is really sitting alone so that the eyes will immediately stop at the button and kind of see that. And there's no sort of clicking around. It's completely separate from everything else. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in just a second here. Law number two is that mobile matters. You have to realize that the majority of people that are looking at your emails, look at it on mobile. It's just the truth of how the world is progressing. And so because of that, you have to keep it in mind whenever you're creating your emails and create them for mobile first and desktop second. The easiest way to make sure that it is sizing properly to mobile is use HTML elements rather than photo elements. What does this mean? A lot of people will create their full email all in pictures and then slice it up into a bunch of pieces and then put it into Klaviyo, which does work and it's fine. The issue is, is that it doesn't size up and down for desktop. So whenever you look at it on desktop, it might look totally fine, but then you go and transfer over to a mobile device and the text is super tiny and hard to read. And so because of that, if you use HTML elements, basically just the elements that are already natively in Klaviyo, like the button, use their button instead of creating one in a photo and inputting it, it will size up and down depending on the device's dimensions. Things that we use for HTML as opposed to an image is just about everything besides the hero image. So that includes button, navigation, any sort of copy we like to have inside of HTML as opposed to an image, especially coupon codes. Whenever you put in a coupon code, do not put it in the image, put it in text so that way people can copy and paste it rather than having to write it in manually if it's in an image. And then lastly, another big benefit to using HTML options over images is that it's actually a lot better for deliverability. Now, again, I'm going to hammer on this because it is massively important. Make your copy easy to read. So just like we were making it scannable before and kind of bolding certain parts or really highlighting important key points, making your copy easy to read is really going to be a design element in two to three major ways. Number one is going to be the spacing. You have to be mindful of how you're spacing out the words. You don't want big, massive blocks. It's not digestible. You want it to be sentences or two paired together that is easy to really navigate through. Number two is going to be the font size. If there's something important, the font size should indicate that it's important. So that way it highlights it. So that's why we have headings and subheadings and then also body text. All of those should have different looks and sizes to emphasize different points in our message. So if they only read the headline, they get the point without having to read the paragraph. And then my third rule when it comes to this is less commas, more periods. We do not want long drawn on sentences that end up becoming a massive block anyways. We want short, concise sentences, meaning whenever you go through an edit, remove commas, add periods instead. Now, this is something that I am always preaching with our team is to design with your eraser. There's a very common saying inside of the copywriting world that basically just says that every word that you remove from your headline, you earn a 500 bucks. And that's because the shorter that it is, the easier it is to, the, to be consumed. The more people consume it, the easier it is to understand. And the more likely people are to take action on whatever your headline is. And I look at design the same way. You get $500 for every item you remove above the fold. So if you could go through and really simplify that entire section, the more likely you are to actually generate some dinero, which we all love. Who doesn't like dinero? Now we're going to move on over to our hero image. Just a couple of quick things. Number one, Canva is totally fine. If you have Photoshop, go for it. If you understand it, or if you have designers like we do use Photoshop, it's a lot better, but Canva will do the trick. And that's what I'm going to use here. Number two is that your dimensions are going to be 900 by 900 pixels. And then number three, I would highly recommend downloading a color picker 
sticker from Google Chrome. Okay, so this is the picture that I designed and I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I did it. So let's go ahead and scroll on down. I made a logo for this as well. So this is exactly how I would go through and recreate this picture if I was just getting started. Number one is that I would go on over to the elements and select a square gradient. You can select any of these, but I just grabbed this one right over here. So I'm gonna scroll on down and put that in. And then I always like rotating it. So that way it is going from up to down. It just looks a little bit better. And that rotation is slightly off. There we go. So that you can see the gradient right there. And then for this brand, I'm just pretending that the colors are yellow and black. So there we go. That's kind of what that looks like. And with it, I actually used a little bit of like a gray color, but you get the point. And then here, I just found somebody that was looking like they lost weight uh, for this. I believe I typed in weight loss and I found a picture of a lady that looked like she had lost weight. I'm just going to use this lady for this example right over here. So I threw her on. If you have lifestyle images for yourself, I would highly recommend just using that. I pressed M edit image and then I did a quick background remover. Uh, this is a premium fe feature from Canva, but Canva is like $10 a month. So I would recommend it if you have an e-commerce store that you're trying to scale and you need to send out email. Cool. And then I just went through and I sized her up just a little bit like so. Boom. And we'll fix that in just a second. And then I always like adding some, a little bit of texture to the image itself, which for this one right over here, I believe I selected something like sparkle. Yeah, that looks right. I just added this and then I made this white over here, copied it and I put it like over here like this and then I threw it behind the lady so that way it kind of like overlaps. So that's kind of like the basic gist of the image and I'll probably size her down a little bit. Boom, like so. And then I added in some text that basically just said flash sale, like so, put it right up there. So that's more or less how we got to this point right over here. Very basic, shouldn't take you too long. This is what ends up becoming our hero image. Ah, uh -huh, pretty interesting. So that is our hero image. Very basic, very simple, very easy to do. Don't overthink it. It's easy. Okay. The last thing is going to be putting it all together, which I'm going to be showing you how we implement this inside of Clavio. So let's go ahead and go back on over to Clavio. This is the final product. So again, we have the logo right up top, the menu, the hero image, and then we have some text and then a call to action. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you very quickly how this was all set up. So the very first thing that we have up here is what is called a header and link bar. So I'm just going to drag and drop that right over here. So whenever you first drop it in, it's going to look pretty ugly. They make it red to make it stand out. All you're going to do is you're going to hit browse and select your logo and it'll add it over here. And then you're going to scroll down and then add in your first link and you could change the text. You could drop in a collection, shop now, contact us. I would really make these call to actions towards shopping more than anything else. And then after that, you are just going to scroll down and then select your color. In this instance, we went for the yellow that was matched up here. And this is where this color picker that I was mentioning earlier really comes in handy because you could go through and select any of the colors that you want and then just go through and and paste in the color right over here to match it up perfectly. Now you can see that I also did change the text to black just to make it match up a little bit better, which is which is just going to be right up here where it says links. You're just gonna select that and then you could change it down to black to make it so that it stands out a little bit better. So that's the header link. Now beyond this, we have the picture, which is very basic. All we're gonna do is drop in the image and then we're gonna hit browse and select the image. At this point, it should fill the entire space and you will end up with something like this. Now an important point that you're gonna wanna make sure you do is you're going to want to add in some alt text. So you could just say flash shell, just in case the image doesn't load there. And then the last thing that you're going to want to do is add in a link address. This is going to link directly to whatever the product is that you are selling for this email. Okay. Now here is the only part that I would say is slightly tricky. You're going to add in your text right over here, and then you're going to type it out. Now, again, you want to do a mixture of some titles as well as some shorter text in between. So that way there's a little bit of variety. And so that you highlight the important thing. So over here, if I was just typing this again, I would just say, forget the diet, boom. And then we could go through and make this a heading. We can make it big. We can make it small whatever it is. I always like centering it up. I think it looks a lot nicer than if it's pushed to one side. And then the remaining part of our text is just going to be down here. I'm not going to retype all of it because there's one key thing that I want you to see. So let's just say that all of our text is right over here. The one thing that you're going to want to make sure you're, you do is you scroll on down to the block and then you turn on the background color. Now, if this looks slightly different than yours, I'm using the newest version of the Clavio editor. This is what they'll transition to over time. Uh, if you're using the older version of the Clavio editor, it might be under the styles button off to the uh, right on the menu. Now, from this point, you could go through and select the color that you want. You can see that this changed to uh, black. What I would recommend doing here is just hitting the color selector and then just selecting the lowest color at the bottom of your picture. So now that you have that color, you're just going to go ahead and paste it in and that will match to the bottom here and make it really look 
look seamless. So that way you can't tell when this begins and ends besides the image. Now, of course, the text doesn't look right because it's black. We can make it a lot more legible and easier to read by just making it white. So boom, there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this so that way it doesn't mess up our example. Now at the bottom here, I went through and I added in a button. Now for the content down here, I went through and added in a button, which is very easy to do. You're just going to select button and drop it in here. This is what they will originally look like. And this is how you can make it look a lot nicer. So the very first thing that I always will do is just change the text. So it just says start today. You can make it whatever you want. Uh, we'll change the color in just a second here. Now the inner padding is going to be slightly different. I like making mine just a little bit bigger right there like that. So it kind of just adds on a little bit of size from the left to right. And then I'll go ahead and make it full width. So it just gives it a little bit more height. Now for the text, you can make it bold. And then for the background color, it's going to be the same exact background color as our other block. Now, from this point, the only thing that we need to do is change the coloration. We could change it to whatever we want. And then we could also change the URL and that's going to direct wherever it's going to be. So I'm just going to put in google.com and then you would hit done. And now you have your new block. Obviously I chose the yellow here instead of the brown. Now, the only other detail that I did add at the bottom here is going to be the horizontal rule. So I just went through and I created a horizontal rule. I just added in the background color like so, and that was it. The only reason that I added this is just to make it so this button was a little bit more of an island and so that it was really standing alone. And boom, that is exactly how to create a high converting email design from scratch. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like them, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button and hit the red subscribe button to join the freaking family. By the way, I do have a link down below that shows you our exact campaign strategy on how to generate over a hundred thousand dollars a month with just email campaigns for your e-commerce store. It's hundred percent free. The link is in the description. And if you want information on how you can start working with our team to help scale your email marketing. There's also a link to book a call directly with me. So that way we can look at your strategy uh, for your email currently and see if there's anything that we can help you with. But that's going to be it for this one though, guys. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Damn.